So in this episode of Piggy Power and the Phaser story, a phase in my life, we are going to fix some wiring issues, which means the clock will work. I have a gear indicator, and when the engine's running, the headlights work, as do the side lights, which is nice. Alright folks, so let's open up our package. Uh, what do we have? We have our gear indicator. Now, what I hear a lot is, oh mate, bro, you can't ride because you've got to have a gear indicator. Well, I don't care. I want a gear indicator. Sometimes I forget I'm in sixth, which is quite embarrassing. And sometimes when coming down to second for junctions, I also think I'm in third or second, etc. So what do we get here? We get some destructions. We get a couple of these nasty clut things that get the wiring in. A couple of sticky tabs to attach the gear indicator, which we're gonna make a little mount for that actually, and then stick it onto the mount. Um, good length of wiring, some cable ties, a couple of plugs. Now these go for retail for sort of 30, 40, 50, 60, as much as I've seen uh, pounds. They're all about the same thing and they do about the same thing, really. It's just a microcontroller inside here, programmed with a bit of code. It receives a signal from the crank sensor and from the speed sensor, and then you program it yourself, following the instructions. Basically, once you've started up, it goes through a little programming sequence to tell you it's it's empty of code, and then you hold when it says one, you hold it at like 4,000 RPM uh, with the wheel up, or ideally not on the road, with the wheel up on a good stand. I'm going to put the front of the bike against a wall. Uh, to help with that situation, just make sure it's not going to go anywhere and you go through all the gears until you're finished and then it says happy and why doesn't say happy, I can't remember what it says now, it puts up and you're done. It's pretty simple to program as I've said, so uh, our destructions state that uh, we have to basically find the speed sensor and then plug this in in tandem, so one end of the speed sensor in there and one end in there so we're sort of bridging it and that picks up the speed and then one of these wires goes down to the, it says the two pole natural or black color plug of the crankshaft position sensor. It has two wires, one is gray, the other usually black blue. Uh, so obviously we're looking for the uh, gray one, I guess. It has two wires, one is gray. Natural black color plug. Oh, that's the color of the plug. Two pole connector on the wire identified on the previous step. I guess that's grey then. Doesn't actually say which one. <laughs> Doesn't actually tell you which one of them to pick up. Uh, I guess it's the grey one. And then you select, you find the red wire and attach it to 12 volt switching. So we've got a red one on there, I guess that's the 12 volt switching. And then this one, which is the green, um, grey or black, it doesn't actually tell you. It says identify those two. And on our wiring diagram, we have, I think, double checked. Just find it. Uh, our crankshaft sensor is there. And there's the black, which is like a, a common earth, essentially. And then the grey, which will probably be the, the signal. And there's a speed sensor next to it, which this will plug into. So we're just going to find the grey wire off the crankshaft position sensor. We'll tap into that. We'll do the, a temporary tap into that and then check if it works. And then we'll go from there. So we've got all the bits we need. We're going to identify where we're going to put this and make a little bracket ready. Um, and then we'll plug this in without fixing it anywhere. We'll probably also be snipping the wiring at some point near the clocks to put a plug in so we can remove the clocks and the fairing and the front end of the bike um, without having to remove all of this, basically. So we'll probably snip in at some point and put a little waterproof plug in uh, the other side of the fairing on the same side as other plugs. So uh, on the other side of this fairing, not this side, there's some plugs. So we'll put another plug there for that. And that should be fine and dandy. It looks like you get a couple of self teeth tabs and a spare front cover for that. I don't know if that's a colour change. I wouldn't think so. Um, I guess if that wears out, you scratch it or something, you've got a spare, which is kind of nice. So, 
we're going to go and get on with this because I've talked for long enough, shown you what we get, shown you what you got. It's actually a pretty simple procedure. You have to get the tank out of the way and find the crankshaft position sensor, which is buried down here on the engine somewhere, and the plug comes up to there. So let's go and find those plugs, identify the wires, we'll wire it up temporarily, check that it works, and then we'll get a mount, fit that, Bob's your uncle, or Robert is your mother's brother. Okay, so we're on the bike now, the tank's still up out the way out of some other wiring you might have seen on a previous episode for this. Um, we decided we want the uh, gear indicator just there. We can't attach it to the clocks, because wherever we attach the clocks you'll never get this trim here, which is one piece out of the way. So we're not going to do that. We're going to attach it to the trim just there and it'll sit just nicely there. We've got our bracket, just had a bit of etch primer because it's um, an alloy bracket. And then we'll paint that black so it just kind of disappears there. And then we'll pop a little hole in that trim, run the wiring through it, and then along to a plug which we'll put here, which will then enable us to take that out with it connected. So we're looking for two plugs. Uh, one plug, I believe, is buried in here somewhere, three pin plug. I can't remember which one it is now. It's in there somewhere. That's for the speedo sensor, so we'll find that in a second. But we're just working on the crankshaft sensor right now, which is this sensor that comes through here, runs its way up here to this plug here. So this plug here, and you can just see, hopefully, and if I try and zoom in and focus on there for you, you can see that hopefully it's got a grey wire and a black blue. We're looking for the grey wire, as far as I'm aware. Uh, now those pins there, we have some spares. So what I'm hoping to do is actually um, wire in with a pin. Uh, this is the, the plug. We have a spare, and we've got the bits we need. And uh, just rather than splicing or anything, we're just going to do a double wire onto that pin so it's a nice, neat OEM fit. That's the plan, anyway. So the other thing we're going to just find before we mess with anything else is we're going to find the plug for the RPM. Uh, then we'll put this just back together just briefly and just pin in on the back of this and check that we actually get the signals we want and we'll go from there. Pull this uh, rubber boot back so there's three plugs in there and it's the white one at the back there. Uh, it's the only plug actually I've found so far that has three pins in it that's that shape so I don't think we can go wrong. So we push in on that plug, a little clip at the top and we should be able to just pull it apart. It looks a bit green though, I'm my concern. I'm going to have to do this two-handed and let's plug in the sensor thingy, the machine thingy. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with the power. Uh, the pin for the rear brake light switch there is the same as the spare pins I have. That's a switch in live and there's obviously not a great amount of current for this little LED to be computed to be lighting up. So that's what we're going to use and that's what it recommends in the instructions. So we've just pulled the pin and put a bit of wire around it, which is the black and red. We've plugged in line the switch, uh, sorry, the switch, the uh, indicator, as we're supposed to. So what should happen now when I power up is it should go 654321, which means, and then flash edl, which is learning. Fantastic, right. But for testing the sensor, so the speedo sensor, if I rotate the wheel now, it should look like a rotating wheel. Yes, good. Fine, so the next thing to do is now see if we can get an RPM signal from the grey wire over there. Uh, and then if that does work, we will wire those in properly, pin them in, cut the wires to length, pin them into the loom, and then obviously run this loom through the chassis, put a plug here, and then uh, be closer to what we want to do. Over there we've pinned into the back of the grey wire. I always use like a piece of solder, pull the pin, put a piece of solder in, and then that wraps around the black and green signal wire to the gear indicator. So this time, ignition on, same thing should happen, slow flashing L. And then if we spin the wheel, it gives us the spinning wheel. And it'll go back to flashing slow L. Now the L should speed up now if it's picking up an RPM signal. It does. Fantastic. Okay, that's good. So now we need to get these wires actually pinned in properly, and um, to do that, I'm going to get fiddly. Let's give us a bit of spray of paint, I think. Oh, wait, hang on. Works better with a can. Yeah. That'll do. Do, 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 do. 
Do 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 do. I'm alright. Yeah. And. Like a pro. So it's not obviously great, um, but it's there. So the OEM one is the green, and the yellow is mine. So not a bad job. Those pins will work nicely, and we sleeved it inside itself. So these are the two wires, and there's our red wire going down, which is the switching positive to the feed, the brown feed. So that's going to tuck into the back of there like that, as you can see what's done. So two wires into there, one's the feed, the red and black, and the red and the green and black goes into the grey, and we can pop this back on there now. Um, I don't think I can do that one-handed. I could try. Oh, I've got one click, which is the OEM side. Yeah, need two hands. Hang on a second, I'll put you down. Yeah. as well. Tidy. Okay, so that one clicked in nicely too. You can see just a little bit of the seal at the back just kicking out, but she's okay. If the Thanks for doing that. Didn't ask to do that, but she did it anyway. Uh, there's a photo for Instagram for some reason. Uh, okay, we'll just do another brief test. Stop going out of focus. Good grief. A lot to be said for using mobile phones rather than these fancy cameras anyway. So I won't tidy any of this up with tape or cable ties, there might be one there. I'm just going to loop that back on itself like that so it's not pulling away at this um, until we've got it all absolutely set up. So test it again, make sure these connections are right. Then we're going to fit that plug in line over there in that fairing and then actually fit the piece on and then head for some programming. Yay! Okay everyone, so insulation is essentially complete. Uh, the, the gear indicator is right there in the middle, which is winning. And it's on its little bracket, which we painted black, so you can't really see it. I've currently got it going through a hole which has already existed, um, which is for the adjustment of the headlights. You can still get a screwdriver in there, you have to do a little stubby one to adjust that, so I don't see that as being an, an issue. And then we might put some tabs on the back of this that you don't see that hold the wire. And then we've done two plugs because a four um, pin plug would be too big to get through the chassis hole there if I ever need to take the wiring out. So I've done a one pin and a three and I've separated the engine sensor too, just a uh, crank sensor because they're a bit temperamental sometimes sharing sort of plugs and stuff. So it's working fine. So the next thing to do is get it up on the uh, the wheel stand here and I'm going to get the nose of it against the wall because we have to go through the RPM and through the gears and the programming. So we'll get the GoPro set up just here somewhere so it's not in my way and uh, we'll, we'll do that next. Good things that I've noticed, the time is correct. Yes, it's 5.13pm, that means it's pretty much dinner time. Oh, the camera wants to go through a soft focus moment. Thank you very much for that. Which tells me one thing, my other wiring fixes down here worked. Yes. So here we are, we're now into the programming uh, phase of this section. So we're going to get on the bike, we've got the rear stand and mid stand in place. It's not really going anywhere. And uh, we've got it chockied on the front as well and we'll keep our handy fingers onto the brakes. So that'll be handy. And uh, yeah, Mike's good. Right, so we're going to start her up and we're going to run through the procedure for programming it in. So let's do that. It's going to be maybe a long-winded process, maybe not, I don't know. Soon find out. Right, here we go. So it's going to flash L fast, and then it will start doing first. So we're going to... Wee! Ah, because our centre stands up. That's not going to work, is it? As soon as we select... It kills. Okay, uh, ah, centre stand, maybe just the side stand. Let's try that. We had a secondary backup there. Yeah, okay, that's okay. to get it warm-ish. It 
it needs to know where idle is, which is not really here. Wait till the RPM drops to normal idle speed. Come on, settle down. Okay, normal idle speed now. She seems to have started to try and learn, so we're just going to reset the system. Okay. Wait until first pops up. Select first. And then, release clutch. Keep idle speed two to four times idle speed. We have it working. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Nice. And that's it. It programmed really quickly actually. So let's just check that it does actually work. Very smoky in here for some reason, that worries me. Bit smoky. Maybe that's fine? I don't really know. I don't know what I've done wrong. It takes a second to recognise. Okay, it's worked though. That was good. And straight away it recognises I'm in first, so that's really nice. Okay, let's turn her off. So next job will be to sort this bodywork out. Got to get a little dent removed, take all the fairings off, rub them all down, clean them up, give them a paint, put it all back together again. Make it look shiny. Thanks for watching. This has been pretty successful, other than the smoke. But I'm thinking that maybe it's just because it's cold. Hoping that it's just because it's cold. And uh, we'll move on to doing other things. So thanks for watching, as I said. Subscribe, comment, like, all the rest of it. Take care. Figgy out.